What do these guys like to hang out? The prospect. The prospect. No, I take that back. Not the prospect. No, of course not. The prospect. That doesn't make sense. No, because the prospect is where the uh, lavish end catering to the well-born and the wealthy. And you will oh, never find really yourself like, in one of yeah, those that's places. That's right. Martin and the other gay nobles. Go. They, they want to go to somewhere that's similar to the pit pot. Yeah, so you guys end up at the... Uh, Pestering beaver or something. <laughs> <laughs> the Crimson Dash. <laughs> the Crimson Dash. Uh, no, that's, that's, that's an adventuring type of, or a group of bandits. Yeah. <laughs> or that's the bandit leader, the Crimson Dash. Um, the Cockerel. Whatever. All right. <clears throat> it's a squalid, dirty, loose, and loud place. A dingy sign depicts the fighting cock. Crest of the Mootland with the words halfway house written underneath. Apparently, as an afterthought, grease stained parchment windows spill yellow light onto the street at all hours. The visitor will have to walk down several steps to enter the house's front door. <clears throat> um, you guys find that the ceiling is too low here in this place. Um, it appears that uh, the uh, cockerel is uh, frequented by several of these large fellows. They um, come in here, and most of the uh, dwarves and halflings that like this place have had to scatter to the sides in the wake of these upstarts, these newbies here. And they don't seem to be harassing the halflings or dwarves at all. They're just everywhere. Halflings, watch your coin purse. Mm -hmm. Landlord appears to be a rotund spry halfling with curly, dirty blonde hair, like they all do. And that's just on his feet. Named Otho Greenfields. He likes puns and thinks the name of his establishment is incredibly clever, as he states out. Don't you think the name of my place is incredibly clever? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bang up dinner, three brass pennies, five for humans because you're bigger and because you eat more. <laughs> really? I eat more than a half? That's what I was just thinking. <laughs> the, price is fixed. the price is fixed, but the menu changes every night. <clears throat> but, um, what's, the, what's the name of the inn he's... The Fighting Cockerel. Depends on how many rats. Now, the are. place where you're going to want to be staying is at. Uh, uh, oh, so you got, actually oh. have. You're picking up both of them? Yeah. Feel, listen to the difference in these brasses. Those just. Those even sound like real coins. Yeah. Oh, man. All right. So, the food arrives. Um, guards are around. They completely ignore you guys. <coughs> I'm going to spend. Um, uh, these soldiers, they're brass tier, right? Mm -hmm. the, yeah. So I'm gonna spend another silver and send over like a flagon of ale or something to these guys. Okay. There's a table. Of, yeah. There's a table of five over there. All right. Uh, they do yeah. one of these things, right. bonking the things on the ceiling, slurching a little bit around. Um, they appear to be fairly benign, um, but you can see that their blades are sharp and at the ready. All They're right. Local discussion tonight here is that the Emperor's army was ambushed by a massive beastman horde. And also that the Emperor supposedly secured Altdorf from recovering from his wounds. He's guarded vigilantly by his champ champion Ludwig von Schwarzhelm, the Captain Marcus Bauerfass, and Captain Marcus Bauerfass of Averheim, the man who fought it to his side during the battle. They talk about Reichsmarschall Helborg again. So I'll, I'll ask these guys. Um, so von Aschenbeck is he? A, is he a pre Harman? Is or is is, is Aschenbeck or Aschenbrook? Sorry. Aschenbeck. Aschenbeck. Harman. The name's Harman. Harman. Yes. Uh, yes. Red hair, one of those big muscles. Moves. Looks like he's got two eels hanging off of his face for a mustache. <laughs> I fill his cup up again with more. Oh, drink. excellent, excellent, excellent! A soldier like yourself. Filling up our cups. Excellent, excellent. What what unit did you serve with? Um, in Averland, I was with the um, Golden Talons. We were. Uh, oh, you were in Averland. So yeah. I bet you you know the Von Kragsberg boys. Yes, I am familiar with the Von Kragsberg yeah, the, boys. We've heard great things about the Von Kragsberg I'm boys. I'm sure their reputation has preceded them. Um. So, what sort of what sort of boss is uh, von Aschenbeck like? Oh, he's not much of a boss at all. His uh, second in command does most of the command, and his name is um, um, Otto. No, uh, Werner Markheim. Yeah, Werner Markheim, oh. that guy. And what's he like? Um, pushy, bossy, kind of mean. 
does he does he know what he's doing though? I mean, uh, the oh, field, he, he appears has, to be more uh, organized than Ashenbeck Ashenbeck himself. Yeah. So he's kind of the the mover and the shaker behind the. Appears to be, yep. Yeah. Ashenbeck pretty much leaves most of his <laughs> duties to that man. Well, I'm glad you take. Yes, in fact, we've never even met this Ashenbeck guy. Ashenbeck guy. He doesn't really mingle with us lowly soldiers. Where does he stay? At uh, Ashenbeck Manor, next to the Temple of Farina, up in Grafsmund. Hmm. Oh yeah, the Graf's Repose. That's a good tavern. Yeah, we go by there usually after we go here. So do you guys usually just hang about the city here? Or do you guys? Oh, we don't really hang city? about. I mean, we're on duty. What? Yeah, we're, we're keeping the peace here. Halflings are notorious thieves, if you hadn't heard. Yeah, I'm gonna look over at Otho and see if he's. Yeah, the watching. several halflings appear notably annoyed at the you know obvious accusation. I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna kind of roll my eyes. Meanwhile, one of the guys takes his hand out of another guy's pocket. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, but do, are do you guys ever sent on errands outside of the city? Never. Um, hmm, so you're just basically kind of acting as militia here now. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Well, enjoy the drink. Why do you ask? I'm just. New to the city? Case in the joint. Hmm. We're spying on you. Well, if you what? need anything, you just ask for me. I was with the... He gets some obscure battle thing. Okay. He doesn't appear that all experience. He's some kind of, you know, lower-level sergeant. Harmon. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well met. Yep, you'll find us here at the, uh, the Graf's Repose. Correct. Do you want to check anything out in here? Anybody playing any games? Um, yes. Uh, dwarves and halflings. Um, they kind of try to hedge you out a little bit. Gentlemen! Gentlemen! You have big hands. <laughs> Come on! Shady. You're kind of knotted down, or is like, you know, down this way, trying to get your hair on fire. A uh, group of dwarves laughs and uh, invites you into the table. Only if you got coin, my boy. Oh, I've got coin. How much coin do you Is want? Is it legitimate coin? Let's see it. <laughs> uh, it's about 23 carat. It'll do. <laughs> <laughs> It'll do, okay. Did you blow most of that money that I no, provided I have a for little, you? No, I've gotten... Well, I lost that one night at the gambling uh, yes. And then yeah. he spent it all on healing herbs. Actually, I won a whole bunch. <laughs> I won a whole bunch, and then it was stolen. Because uh, dimwit wouldn't <laughs> cover my ass. That's yeah. why I always tuck it up in my ass. <laughs> Can't get stolen that way. That's where my ass pennies lie. All right. recording this. Huh? You kind of get <laughs> grilled and quizzed by some suspicious dwarves before the game begins. They just want to clear a few things up, such as why you're here, um, why uh, uh, somebody taller than the ceilings would bother to come into the cock. Actually, there's another place called Cox, which is a two-story half-timbered building on the edge of the Ulrichsman district. Um, but this is the fighting cockerel. Oh. Well, I, I, I just he's here to steal their women. <laughs> <laughs> Which one of you is the woman? <laughs> well, I just happen to be with my mate here, and uh, which one is the soldier? <laughs> Slaps his friend on the friend. back. <laughs> my mate, not that kind. My of mate. gay lover, my mate. <laughs> we don't have children, but we mate. <laughs> yeah. I noticed he's got the uh, the uh, cod piece in both the front and the back. <laughs> oh, 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 and he laughs and smacks his friend in the back. I was wondering, did your mate keep looking over at here like you're spending money? You so be. the dwarves seem to be throwing consistently mean slurs at you know you being a human and stuff. And you still want a game with them? A round ear. Sure. All right, they pull out these round or these cubic. Um, they look like okay. So you saw 2001: A Space Odyssey. They look like those, except they're gray. And they're, they almost look completely blank on the surface. And then if you look closer, you can see that there's writing and scribbling through them. And some type of game you need to figure out. We don't explain the rules. We just tell if you win or lose. So make, <laughs> an, make an intelligence That's check. Two purples. Game. Oh, you lost again, boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, no, no. I thought you won, but you didn't. And you get a bonus yellow for being a gambler. 
You know, the third try, you almost always win. Oh, you <laughs> lost again! Oh, that never happens! Do I get a bonus yellow for... Well, I, ha I have... Because I have a yellow with obduration. Um, nope, it's a straight intelligence check. you got to figure it out from the brain. Oh, you got intuition, work. that'll work. Intuition? I do have intuition. Good. If you, if you roll two chaos, stars, two chaos stars, you offend them and they try to kill the whole group. Okay. It's a good thing you and I, <laughs> I, didn't roll, I didn't roll any chaos stars, but I just didn't succeed. I got. Oh, I you got an exploder, exploder though. Hammer time! Come on. Four see, I got Get a four, comment. and I have four three, cancels. So. Come on, comment. <sighs> three three eagles. eagles. So you're going to get a white to your first check. They laugh. Got to figure it out, and the guy's shuffling around these 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 bars. They look to be made of stone or some kind of weird alloy, and he's shuffling them around almost like a shell game. You've kind of seen this sort of thing before, and then he deals out three to his three companions over here and slides the fourth one over to you. You might not want to flip that one over, and you're like, "Fuck, you got to flip it over too." <laughs> <laughs> Make another intelligence check. <laughs> One bonus white on this one. I got one success. All right. So you figured you figured out one thing. That you might not want to flip it over. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't flip it over. All right. Now go ahead and make your standard check with uh, two purples and four blacks, because you don't have a single clue but a bonus white. So you're just flying by your balls, right? And now. how much do you want to bet? Uh, minimum in is 20 silver. 20 silver. Okay. Going and it all goes in. two rounds. Going all in on a 6-2. A I got an exploder. That's <laughs> one, two, three, four. So one, two. Yeah, beginner's look. So. He's cheating. He's got one up his sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> oh. One, so zero. Oh, he's zero. going. He's burning the fortune. He's going to pull a mill shed. There you go. <laughs> Oh, nails it! All right, you for, you survived the first round of the pickaxe. Damn straight. Now, how about the pick? <laughs> Flip him over now, boys. <laughs> Which direction do you want to turn it? He says. Uh, Go ahead and make another intelligence check. You're kind of eyeballing the other guys, looking to see how they've got theirs arranged. You just put it vertical. Yeah. <laughs> You're holding it between your fingers like this. <laughs> Any blacks on this? Um, no, but still got the bonus white. Dang, two exploders. You catch on fast. The dwarves are impressed, so you figure out which direction to turn it that probably gives you the best odds. Now just play a flat hand and roll uh, with two blacks this time. One, two, no successes. He's going for it. Last one of the day. We're ten minutes in. <laughs> got two eagles. Three eagles. I got three eagles. Yeah. All right. So you pretty much got the game figured out after the first round. I you lose your 20 points. silver. Okay. You're a but horrible you, gambler. But you... <laughs> <laughs> but they're impressed that you held on. And oh. uh, you, you gain the begrudging respect of the guys at how quick you were a learner. Second round? Hell yeah. All right, it's just two, two flat intelligence checks on this one. No. Um, no blacks. Two purple still? Yep. And you get your bonus white. And you said no black? No blacks. Blacks and a lot of them together. One, two, one, two, but a comet. Comet's a so success. You survived the first round, already. second yeah. round. Yeah. You're going to win 60 silver if you win this. <laughs> Yeah, one, two, three, I do miss one that. success. All right, you win sixty silver now. Booyah! He plays this game for a while. Mostly comes up sixty silver ahead, and you're not quite sure what's going on. They're flipping and twisting these little <laughs> obelisks, and the dwarves are very drunk. You just need to make a resilience check to avoid getting drunk because they they're... pass out, shave their beard. <laughs> 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 Convince uh, the halflings to do it. <laughs> they draw elf ears on their heads. Yeah. <laughs> yep. One, two, 
Ooh, no. All right. Calm it up. So you little. eventually get too drunk to play, <laughs> and uh, you drag him oh, out of there. Yeah, and I come over. Yeah, I come over. Wasted and, and hammered, but you didn't manage to piss anybody down. off. The dwarves <laughs> welcome you back any time. You can come back to the fighting cockerel at any time, and uh, you have um, managed to. I buy to the dwarves around. Okay. So uh, that would give be... him five. Okay. All right, so we'll make our way back to the coaching inn. All right. So you find yourself on the edge of town helping a couple of priests uh, do last rites, but they put people in these bags, mostly street urchins have been dying lately, and you want over the edge, and you're like, put your hand to your ear, you listen. <laughs> That's a long way down there. <laughs> and then you're thud, bam, crash, crash, crunch, 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 thud, 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 boom, 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 boom. Yeah, that's much more efficient than uh, the way we do it at my temple. A bunch of ravens come flying out from below that have been feeding just in a large, large group, you know, and they begin circling for a while. You finish off four or five more bodies in a city this size. And uh, you know these are two. These are people that are too poor to be buried in the Moore's Garden kind of place. Um, it's called the uh, yeah. Anyways, it's like a Moore's Garden. Most people are most people are poor enough that they just get burned. They go to the you know you go to Moore's Church, you get burned. Usually you're dead. And then you know <laughs> you, if you sneak around, you do some bribes, you can get buried in Moore's Garden. Otherwise, you just kind of puff it around town. Since I had the three eagles, does that mean I'd, I'd get one fortune point? Yes. <coughs> Just in case. <laughs> you probably won't need it. No. <coughs> it's uh, it's eight, eight twenty now. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah. Um, but you find out that nobody's seen the Emperor since he was wounded, just his champion, Schwartzhelm. Some say his injury's worse than he thought. He'll probably be dead soon. But Averlanders of the Toast of Eldorf heard you came up from Averland. They've risen high enough in the Emperor's favor, too. Even Averland troops are defending the Emperor's palace. Too bad it weren't a Midland captain who reached his side first when he fell. Where are you from? I'm a Reichlander. Oh. They kind of clam up a little bit around you. <laughs> you know, that's okay. I'm kind of used to that. They're, 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 they're wondering why it's taken three swings to throw the body over instead of two like we normally do. <laughs> Please, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm big for a Reichlander. <laughs> yeah, we're not talking cock. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> why is that one stuck to you? No reason. No reason. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's. Uh, they they really do. They start all kind of warm, telling you all this kind of stuff, and then they get they get kind of quiet about things. Um, Quiz you about where you're from. I tell them I was born a Reichlander, but when I came to Moor, none of that matters anymore. Oh, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you ever buried a wolf? Seems like a trick question. I ever buried a wolf? Yep. Make it a, make a piety check. <coughs> In all those questions. They ask you that and several other questions that seem to be a bit specialized towards Ulrich. Let's see here. Maybe a fellow adventurers ran around in bloody wolf skins. Ha! Huh. I got Three successes and an eagle. You're from out of town. I had a black. <laughs> Racist. <laughs> ha! Ha! <laughs> that was a chaos star on the other side of that thing. <laughs> so you managed to answer correctly. How do you answer? <laughs> Have you ever buried a wolf? Correctly. I answer correctly. Have I ever buried a wolf? Um, I've never taken one down myself. A way to dodge the question. <laughs> <laughs> it seems to satisfy him. <laughs> um, is this the map you're using? Yep, that one's a okay. beautiful map. I was going to print it out, but I don't have a color printer anymore. Okay. <clears throat> too poor. I'll do it. Are you trying to say I'm slightly evasive? I will. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Why do you always have to ask questions? Why are you asking me if I always have to ask questions? <laughs> um, they note that uh, the temple of there's the the big temples around here. The temple of Rena, the temple of Sigmar is existing, um, and then also Rena. obviously the temple of Ulrich. Um, <clears throat> um, I ask if they've heard anything of uh, uh, 
strangers coming into town, you know, uh, Go ahead and read fanatics, about, witch hunters, stuff like that. Read about the Temple of Ulrich and Ulrich's Mund, and Ulrich continues to the next paragraph on the next page. So, Ed, you, might, you find yourself, uh, uh, you wake up and there's drool dripping down on your clothes as this toothless um, barber surgeon is up above you, <laughs> got his knee on your chest like this, holding you down, and he's got these two pinchers like this, and he's slowly going into your mouth with the pinchers, <laughs> and his drool is getting closer and swinging closer and closer to your face. <laughs> and then he holds his fingers over in your eyes and he says, this is going to hurt a little bit. <laughs> and that's the last thing you remember. <laughs> the next thing you, you wake up <laughs> your jaw, you can't close it. <laughs> and Beatrice is combing your hair back. She's tying a bandage around your head. And he's, he, she's mumbling something about... I don't think that Werther knew exactly what, what, what you had asked him to find. And you can see Werther standing outside, head <laughs> head down, and uh, it looks like he's been, he's been beaten several times with a switch of some size. I'm having memories of Baldwin from... Uh, oh, yeah. Black uh, Adder. Black Adder. What do you know? <laughs> Black Adder. But you, why did you, you needed to, what, did you I have got a wound a I've got a spitting teeth. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you wake up, you're no longer spitting teeth. So is that critical gone? Yes. So is this a regular wound now? Yep. It does cost you 20 silver to get rid of it, but it's gone. Now you just have no teeth. And now you've just got the regular wound. Um, your jaw will not close. You're unable to chew for like two days because it's or talk properly. somewhat subluxated. <clears throat> Oh. At some point, do oh. I come back and see this old coot working working him over? Or? Oh no, no, you totally missed it. Okay, All right. it was in it was in privacy because okay. you wouldn't let a lesser noble see you okay. at your worst. Oh. I can't be here like 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 uh, I, I I can't go out like this, uh, 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 Oh, we'll just tie that up for you, hon. And she's got your head all tied up, and she puts yeah. a she puts a bunch of this grimy. It smells like wintergreen chew all over your face, and ah, uh, it burns. Ah. And she starts to she puts this stick on top of your head, and she starts cranking it down. I don't worry, dear. I learned this from one of the maids. And she begins cranking this uh-huh. this thing closer and closer to your head, and you get this stabbing pain through the side of your jaw and into your ear, and you get this terrible ringing in your you can't hear out of that ear for like the session. Um, but she does manage to get your jaw closed. Now you can can't get it open, and you're just like this. Uh. It's like in a world <laughs> <laughs> where dentistry has gone awry. Victor, uh, this is horrible. She, you know, Beatrice is gossiping about the local gossip, and she says, That white wizard, I think his name is Maurer, has taken over as the emperor's personal physician. I think we should take you to see him. His healing magics did save the emperor's life, I hear. But still, a wizard? I wonder if he knows anything about these types of things. He's a... He's a fraud. <laughs> you begin pulling your grin in oh, your sad. teeth. And you can hear a crackling uh, side of your mouth, and it just begins to hurt and split into your head. Uh, oh, dear, just lay down. Give me some fugments. She uh, says, here, take this oil of clove. Uh, don't worry, I'll take it out. I'll, I'll take it right out of your allowance. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> take some, puts her finger, dips her finger in it, rubs it around your mouth, and it instantly begins to feel better. But you can feel as she's going through your mouth, you're like... Those weren't supposed to be the teeth they were pulled. <laughs> but it does feel better. Feels like there's a bunch of gauze packed in your mouth with, along with some uh, uh, boiled down ox. Uh, you know that little dangly thing that oxen have underneath their belly? Their it's not their penis, but it's the like the little dangly thing that like drags on the ground, you know, from the uh. middle. It's evidently pretty fatty, but it works great. So they soak the... the the stuff in it, let it go a little bit rancid, then they shove it in your mouth to, uh, you know, to yeah, like the make sure that it feels better. Foreskin webbing. Foreskin webbing. 
Hey, which quarter are we staying in? Which district? Oh, I don't know. You guys come into town at the... Uh, uh, down south? Uh, yeah. well, are we staying at the... There's the Castle Rock coaches, so here's the map. And Mountain Dew or Cheeto or uh, Oreos and Mountain Dews. The, uh, the dude gives me this look like... So you're getting high tonight. <laughs> so right. It is. Yeah, you're like, so? It's legal? Okay. It's 427. So this is where everything's at around here. Okay. You, kinda get, you guys get the lay of the land. Okay. Sure that. It's always the same guy that's there, too. And he always just looks at me like... Oh. <laughs> right. Didn't hide. Okay. Dime bag. Anybody want to uh, get high? partake in some plums? I needed those. Uh, leaves me. <laughs> I needed those like day two of taking Vicodin. Oh, yeah, those kind of stop you up. Oh man. Try morphine. Oh, that's funny. Vicodin. For some reason, I thought you said Viagra. I'm like, why are you telling us this? Because <laughs> he's a plaguey. That's why. Yeah. He's got like six wives. Yeah. <laughs> yeah day two of taking Viagra. I yeah. take that. Oh man, does that Viagra plug you up? <laughs> So later that day, you kind of all meet up, and you are at the Castle Rock Inn. Um, Beatrice insists that you go stay at the other place. Prospect? The Prospect. Prospect is a lavish inn catering to the well-born wealthy. The owners of the Prospect, Rudolph and Sigrid Buckler, are scrupulous in their gentility and instill a similar attitude in their staff. Business is conducted with a level of civility that could not be faulted by the most cross-grained of the dowager duchess, and class is everything. Such a relief in Middenheim. Martin can find some problems. You feel immediately in place as you arrive here. Anyone who is not of noble birth immediately feels out of place, with an impression they will not be reinforced by the attitudes of the in-staff and the few patrons who are in the foyer and lounge. Yes, they're unfailingly polite and um, lethally good to you. And gossip on the gossiping like mad behind your back. Who are the proprietors again? <clears throat> Rudolph and Sigrid Buffler. Buffler? Yep, Buffler. 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 The staff does seem to be a bit on edge because, um, as you recall, Gunther said that the witch hunter is staying here. She's not a witch. Yeah. Perfect. She came the day before us. Boop fruit. Boop fruit. Boop fruit. Boop fruit. Yep. Okay, over. Some poop. Plug it up, man. There's a plunger back there. <laughs> How do I lean towards me? That's what plums are when they're like this. So, since I'm uh, gently born, yes. am I comfortable in the... Uh, oh, you're not staying here. I'm not staying there, I know, but I need to go in there to talk to the uh, witch hunter. Mm -hmm. So, since I'm gently born... Yes, you know how to act. Okay. You know your place in society is kind of the, the big thing, to be able to be gently born and not uh, pretending to be something else. Remember, bitches, I'm going to bury you one day. <laughs> 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 yeah, that sounds gentle. <laughs> No, that's what I'm saying on the inside. Oh, okay. Gunther informs you that, oh yes, I remember her all right. Every inch a witch hunter. And they stick in the mind. That hook, too, came in just the day before you, like you said. And her Where's luggage was sent on, let's see, yes, He's to the prospect. Them. Very nice. Wish I could afford to stay in a place like that. Who's Gunther? Gunther is the guy at the, the took, you, took you in at the oh, coaching okay. end. He's basically your uh, dropping off point. He does not appear to be working for Von Aschenbeck. But there's a lot of von Ashenbeck stuff around. You know, if you were a, if you were a Coke guy and there's a lot of Pepsi around, that's how you feel. Ashenbeck's the one we're investing in, right? And supposedly uh, <coughs> Adele von whatever the fuck her name is, Ketzenblum is supposedly here too. But anyways, is where she's supposedly staying. At the Prospect. Mm-hmm. Is everybody staying at the freaking Prospect? No, just her. Um, <clears throat> Not yet. You will be. Ashenbeck stays at Von Ashenbeck Manor. 
And what's the third thing you guys are checking out? Ma, uh, not Mauer. We were, uh, we were investigating the Von Eschenbeck's men. Uh huh. Yeah. And the uh, oh, Eternal uh, Flame. The w- Eternal Flame in the Temple of Ulrich. Yeah. You need to go to the Collegium Theologica. Do you have that sheet? Robert Oppenheim. Did you grab the map? It's right back there. Everybody look at this. This is where you guys are at, if you're looking at where yeah, you're at on the map. Right so uh, we need to go and drop some shit in the uh, flame in Ulrich's eternal Yeah, I want to go visit the Temple of Ulrich. Excellent! <laughs> Did you want to do anything here before you go? <laughs> you're right. Uh, well, I want to go to the prospect right, and, nice and look cackle. for the... Uh, I want to go to the prospect and look for the, uh, the witch hunter. Gad, gad, gad. Yes, sober yet? No. So wait. But they did bring you along. <laughs> so who's at the prospect? Am I at the prospect? You're staying at the prospect. Okay. I'm not staying the, here, just visiting. The uh, priest of good news arrives. Priest of good news. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I would expect you to stay here. What are you doing here? You're down in the foyer. Investigating. Ha- having uh, copious amounts of mint-flavored uh, liqueur to try and cool your mouth down. Through a straw. What you don't understand is the priest is <laughs> And since your jaw is locked closed, you're unable to get out the ox... Testicle webbing? Testicle webbing <laughs> soaked gauze that's been shoved up into your mouth and pressed to the roof it's of your the mouth. It's the fumundus drip is what it is. Mm-hmm. That's the type well, of I'm sure those people listen to every word I have to say, right? Uh-huh. Oh, a terrible situation. Our, our, our coach was ambushed by these foul... Beast of chaos, also known as Mexicans. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you start, you start, to, you start to feel odd and out of place because oh, what once would have been taboo topics for you, instead talking of high fashion and uh, local gossip, you begin talking of adventure, and you can see their eyes become glazed as you can see denial form in their minds. There's anything dangerous out in the real world. Uh, it's definitely an eye-opening experience. Are the teeth to prove it? Uh, uh, they start. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> One of them pulls her hands out of her muff and just goes. Oh, oh that's really. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Uh. Not to worry. This this will all be fixed. It'll be as beautiful as ever. Good. So it's this von Aschenbeck. Tell me of him. So von Aschenbeck, um, very wealthy, married into a. Actually, he's very wealthy because. Like Graf Frederick married into a rich family. So he didn't His start. wife is where all the money came from. So he just had a name, but not much money. And he has done very well. He's a very successful businessman. Um, however, it's rumored that uh, Werner Markheim um, has a little bit more control over him than he should. Oh, Mark, have you heard that name before? Yeah, he's yeah. the he's second, second command. Second. He's the, was troops at the same. Oh, peak. Warner. He's the anal. Oh, and make a D eight. Make the purple D eight roll for me. Tell me if you get a double cancel or a chaos star. Yeah, of course you do. Double cancel. <laughs> you know, one in four chances. Of course you're going to get one of them. All right, there's only one double cancel. No, there's two double cancels. So. Yeah, you have, you have a three and eight chance of dicking yourself. You find yourself soon sipping on fine Bretonian wine. These people begin to talk about powerful priests, nobles, wealthy merchants, um, even leaders of the rank and file organizations, petty bureaucrats, sell swords, tradesmen professional soldiers, all people of power they begin to talk about. And uh, since you're new in town, they let you in on a little secret about uh, how to make sure you find out what you're uh, really seeking in this uh, in this city and how to get there. They, lead, they tell you all kinds of information about um, about Von Aschenbeck Manor, the graphs are posed. Uh, they talk about priests, they talk about how worthless the priests are, how religion doesn't exist. And you're drunk enough on the Bretonian wine that you're not quite sure, but it seems a little odd that they're speaking in this way. Um, 
And Middenheim is currently ruled by the elector, which is Graf Boris Todbringer, and he's been away fighting. Um, in the Graf's absence, he has appointed a steward, um, and the steward's name is nobody special. <coughs> Anyways, make a, uh, let's see, a discipline check for me. <coughs> How many purple? Just one. That's all you'll need. No, oh, fuck six. How about you fail? I just got zero. But I'm going to go start with the fortune points. Okay. Gain a yellow to education and full floor checks. There yeah. it is. You want it? What? You, you decide to succeed? Oh. Or, do you, or do you dare try to understand what they're telling you? 